we've been staying right here in this anchorage in front of Salinas, in front of the big beach because that's where the marina is and that's where the best anchorage is but we've been listening to those guys all day long those jet skis are circling the boat the whole time they're coming so close it's so freaking annoying so i hope you can appreciate that we've been staying here some more nights just to prepare the live stream and go live with you guys so let's hope it's gonna be a good live stream and worth it and we're taking our trusty dinghy that has been with us for two years now almost to the day and it's in great shape i would not recommend this one to anybody. Anybody you like anyways. Anybody I like. And we've been paddling this bad boy for six weeks. It's not that bad, it's a good workout. The funny thing is we don't have any oars because they broke. So we're using a kayak paddle split in half. So we fight over the longer half. <laughs> one is definitely longer, but just by a, an inch. But it makes a difference. There is no going uphill from here with this thing in. No. Oh, we figured out how to how to paddle quite okay right now. So. We promise we're gonna get a, an, another motor for this dinghy or a new dinghy soon. <laughs> All of our friends make fun of us. All the other boaters make fun of us. But I think we're getting also a huge bonus with everybody we meet. They're like, okay, they're really making it happen, kind of thing. That's cross. Okay. Over there, we'll be safe. It's the day after. The live stream yesterday was a complete disaster. I don't, I'm not gonna talk about it anymore because I'm just gonna get upset. But the decision has been made by the captain that we're gonna have a break today. We planned on sailing down to Guayaquil against the wind and the current so it would be really rough to find new anchor chain and a couple other things that we need. And um, instead we're gonna go up north that means with the wind and I guess James is gonna put out the spinnaker and we're gonna just sail for fun. That is a new concept on Zingaro. Normally we sail to get to a place but today we're just gonna sail for the hell of it. Um, James made me some coffee I think he's trying to cheer me up and um, he raised the anchor and the sail all by himself and we're already on our way out of the bay passing all the container ships that are anchored out here and James is about to get the spinnaker out and instead of helping him with the sails today I'm gonna be the dedicated videographer the thing I like the most so let's hope we're gonna get a good sailing episode out of this for you guys okay let's get the spinnaker Welcome to our starboard hull. This is where we store our rice, our muesli, and our spinnaker. We store it in the bag. I wish we had a locker up front to put this in. It would make it a lot easier to wield. Uh, usually this is a two-man job. It weighs probably, I don't know, maybe 40 or 50 pounds. Um, and a lot of the time you have a little locker up front you just open up and attach the halyard to and then just pull it up out of the locker. Setting up the asymmetrical spinnaker is a little bit of a pain in the butt and definitely more work than just pulling out the jib and raising the main, but it's always worth it. So the asymmetrical spinnaker is a light wind sail used when you're going downwind. The first thing we do is we attach the halyard to the top and make a bridle for the tack, the frontmost lower point of the sail. Having a bridle at the tack allows for us to pull the sail from one hull to the other, depending on where the wind is coming, and giving us a greater range of use. 
Then one of us goes to the halyard and pulls the sail up all the way to the top of the mast. And we put away the jib in preparation for opening the genicker or asymmetrical spinnaker. This time the wind was pretty light, somewhere between 12 and 15 knots, I would guess. But as soon as there's more wind than that, opening the spinnaker is quite unnerving. This sail has so much force, it's really important to always tie off the uphaul in a place that's easily accessible, so in case the wind switches or the sail gets out of control, which can happen pretty quickly, you know where to go to get it down. I can count the days we sailed for fun like this on one hint, <laughs> where we just went out and messed around. And that is kind of a bummer because we both really enjoy sailing. But if you do it every day, it just becomes kind of a routine. And I think it's nice to just make an effort to break out of that routine from time to time and actually appreciate what's around you. Salinas to go to Ba Avaganu, or I don't know the name to tell you the truth, but um, it's a little fishing village in a little cove and it looks super cute and I want to go. And we have about an hour and a half of light left and probably an hour and a half of the journey left, so this should be interesting. But luckily, in this bay, in the whole bay, for miles it's only 30 40 feet, so we can just anchor out in the blue, it doesn't really matter. Oh, finally. No more reggaeton! Reggaeton, why? You got the spinnaker off? Yeah, no Doing shit. good? <laughs> looking good, looking styling. And it was an awesome day! How about you, how do you feel? I've got a load off my chest. Just um, relaxing for a whole day. Just really feeling good right now. I mean, the live stream was a disaster, and we've been working so hard for it the last couple of days. The the work life and sailing around the world is just there's just a lot of stuff to always consider, and so much is going on in the back of my mind, our minds the whole time. You, know, you seem to be handling it quite okay, maybe. <laughs> The thing, um, what I'm thinking about most is Easter Island. We're planning this trip right now. We're talking about it every day. Uh, it's gonna be 2,500 miles to Easter Island, and that is in the middle of nowhere. And it's super unprotected. There's not much on the internet about, like, can we actually anchor there? We might have to sail all the way there and pass it. So all these preparations that we have to do right now, we have to get more chain because we have to anchor in over 20 meters of water from what we read and we don't have the chain to do that with. We need a force stay, which is only the most important stay on this boat. We need, we're getting a water maker, which is great, but we have to think about all the logistics and getting it here down to Ecuador. Customs are always complicated and there's an import tax here in Ecuador of 100% and we have to figure out how to avoid paying nine grand to bring the water maker down. A that free gets, water maker. That we get sponsored, exactly. So, just getting the sails up and getting out of the anchorage and not thinking about any of this for a couple of hours is just so relaxing right now. 
and taking a shower. It's just a, with this lifestyle, it's just a little things in life. Like, I'm actually smelling okay right now. And I, this is a half washed shirt. I mean, I rinsed it and stepped on it a little. It just feels good sometimes to just do a spa day. I should be painting my nails. Maybe we should paint our nails, James. What do you think? Sure. <laughs> So we made it yesterday. We had uh, we anchored accidentally pretty far outside because we we came sailing in and we filmed that right. And James prepared the anchor and um, I guess a wave lifted Zingara up and the, the anchor just dropped here so <laughs> we had to drop the sail and uh, nothing happened so we're good but I was all shaky that scared me we dropped the sail in time so that we just kind of set the anchor a little more roughly than we would normally do it probably but that's okay it's pretty people on the beach it's a Sunday everybody's out and it's super windy and the problem with that is we we got woken up by the noise of the rigging is humming um, so James is trying to find out what exactly is humming and how to stop it because it's it's getting pretty loud down there in the in the bunk hey James yo did you find out what it is yet yeah it's the outer shrouds the outer shrouds huh yeah But the thing is, there's like a there's a harmonic resonance on this line, and then it stops here, and then there's one here, one there, one on the back of me, maybe one here too. So we need one, two, three, four, five, six, probably two on the back too. So eight of those we dead cats. Our boat's gonna look weird. I'm not sure the microphone can pick it up, but what sounds like a motorboat driving by in the distance is actually the rig and you can also feel it on the deck it's vibrating here but that's pretty loud downstairs let's see if, if jamie can fix it 